Love it or hate it, Halloween comes to haunt us every year. Today, when the veil between the worlds of the living and the dead is at its thinnest, many households will be battening down to avoid hordes of trick-or-treaters. Well, it seems a new tradition is brewing as a way to avoid poor Halloween etiquette. As Jennifer O'Connor from Ganelaba explains. In the lead up to Halloween, my husband and I uh, were having a conversation regarding whether or not we'd like to participate. As he's been living in Australia for the past 14 years. He actually migrated from Canada. And we sort of had the conversation around our boys and whether or not we wanted to start introducing these traditions this year. And we thought, well, they're two and four and it's probably the right type of time. But we also wanted to be quite respectful of our neighbourhood as well in as we know that a lot of people don't like to celebrate Halloween so we decided that you know we would do a little letterbox drop so we put this little package together with a little note to our neighbours just basically saying that our children would like to participate and with that letter as well we put some lollies on a balloon and on the letter itself it just asked if the neighbourhood wanted to participate just to put that little balloon out the front of their houses and our kids would come and knock on their door and basically they could do some trick-or-treating with us. We've, the letter that we've done we've just made up ourselves and just put that together and put it out to everybody. And what's the response been? It has been absolutely fantastic. Not only have we had neighbours calling basically saying, yes, please bring our kids to their houses, um, but they've also had some people calling us asking if they could actually tag along with us and join our party. So now we're having a little party beforehand with some neighbourhood kids. Pretty much everyone who's had a letter come out to them have been really receptive to it and very happy for us to come to their houses to participate. It, it makes me feel safer and it also makes me feel happy in the sense that it's actually bringing our neighbourhood together and making everybody want to participate and, you know, enjoy the, the children having some fun and enjoying life as it is. I love the look on our kids' faces when they get to dress up as their favourite characters and just enjoy time with mum and dad and, you know, our neighbourhood and just going around and meeting our neighbours again and enjoying their time with them. So why is Halloween becoming such a popular festival in Australia? Professor David Roy, lecturer in education at the University of Newcastle, says there can be no light without darkness. Most of the traditions that we actually undertake within Halloween actually are very similar to those that were being applied, say, 2,000 years ago. We dress up, we guise, we disguise ourselves, and the reason why we do that is because in the belief system, um, even going up to just over, say, 100 years ago, is the veil between the living and the world of the dead is thin on the night of Halloween because it is the beginning of the new year. It's when the, the, the changeover between death and life happens within the environment and it's in the Northern Hemisphere. And so that's what's happening in the spirit world. And you dress up to disguise yourself from the spirits so they do not know you're in the living and therefore they will not attack you and you will be safe. No different to having gargoyles on church buildings. Um, so that idea is the same. The idea of trick-or-treating actually stems from, from two factors within the celebration. It was where you would um, gather together and visit other people's homes and within your village to celebrate the coming winter and to use up all the goods you had collected over the summer that might rot. Uh, and that also includes then leading on to the idea of soul cakes, which Shakespeare talks about when people would literally knock on the door to ask for soul cakes uh, from the poor, and the rich would then feed the poor and salve their conscience. So the, the, the Christian and Catholic religion picked up on these aspects of Halloween and incorporated it, the same way that the Christmas festivities we have are deeply pagan, but we now have incorporate, incorporated religious Christian modern meaning into them. The, the Celtic people would have a festival, they would have a big feast uh, run by the clan chief at Samain, the new year, which it used to be before the Gregorian ch a calendar changed. That again is why we have parties. Um, you would bob for apples, um, and the reason that we used apples and fruits, etc., was to so that we used up the, the fruit that was fresh and that children wouldn't use rotting fruit. Uh, so there's multiple things that we do within Halloween, um, and also the lighting of lanterns, pumpkins used to be sweets or turnips, and again that is to scare away the evil spirits and to light up um, the winter night. So all these things go back thousands of years. Yeah, it's interesting because 
we do these things without necessarily knowing what they're about. Mm. Are, are there any cultures which still actively believe that the veil between the living and the dead is thin on, on this day? It's hard for people to ever prove that people actually believe these things because science has not yet been able to prove if there is anything such as a spirit world and so people are quite reticent. But I think when we look at the, the depth of faith that many people have in the Catholic faith and in a lot of the Protestant faiths, um, even in the Pentecostal faith, the fact that they believe in good and evil spirits, it suggests that there is something underlying there, but no one's really probably going to admit it. What do you do in your family to celebrate Halloween? <laughs> well, uh, we have decorated our house um, throughout um, significantly with, with many imageries of, um, of skeletons and, and, and black and, and cats and, and pumpkins and, and, and the multitude. It's, it's for fun for, for the family, for the kids, for the, for the friends who come round. Um, we all have our costumes organised. We have had for some while. We'll obviously be having music and, and lights and candles and, and playing games and, and basically celebrating. And, and part of the tradition of that is that you have a positive atmosphere within your house uh, to scare away any particular spirits who might be wandering. If anyone knocks on our door who's on their own, we'll be most concerned because people should go around in pairs to keep yourself safe. <laughs> well, I think it's really important for children that you know we recognise that we are mortal human beings, um, that, but we do so in a way that does not terrify the individual about, I'm going to die, but actually just almost can be playful and say, look, there's nothing to be scared of the dark. This is life, and, and life has a progress. But that is not something to fear. Life is something to celebrate. Happy Samhain and Halloween and a Day of the Dead to you. <laughs>